I would like to revisit uh, the, my note on sufficient statistics. And uh, this note was to illustrate the example given in Kava and Thomas. Uh, last time I gave a wrong number and wrong page number, so it has to be corrected to 2.127 equation 2.127 in page 37 of Cover and Thomas second edition. And uh, here is the definition of sufficient statistics. A function Tx is said to be a sufficient statistic relative to the family of distribution parameterized by data. If X is independent of data given T for any distribution on data. So that's the definition. And uh, uh, the textbook uh, example was to consider uh, if this uh, is the sufficient statistic for data or not. And uh, data is a uniform distribution in the interval from data to data plus one. So if data is a C, it should be uh, C to C plus one. So that is the interval, the distribution is uniform, okay? And uh, uh, in such a case, T is a sufficient statistic for data, where T is defined to be maximum of uh, samples, uh, sample random, uh, random variables of X1 through Xn minimum of x1 through xn. So t is made of two numbers, okay? So when data is given, the distribution is fixed. From this distribution, you take samples, x1, x2, all the way up, up to xn, and each one, each one of these xn f or xi's uh, random variables that is uniformly distributed uh, in the interval from C to C plus one. So um, here, uh, hold on a sec. Here, data uses data uses random variable. I mean, uh, dummy variable C. Data is a random variable itself, okay? And uh, x i is a random variable, but uh, it should follow this distribution right here. So it is, each one is uniform on the interval C2, C plus one. I use uh, this notation, uh, but uh, you, you may use this uh, as well. So maybe you can change it here to this one as well, because in my note, I use this, okay? But it doesn't matter. You can just have, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just, uh, you, don't, you don't have to exclude C plus one. So you can use uh, this one as well. And uh, I made many observation all the way up to Xn. So I make this many sample observations and then using all of those uh, uh, samples, let's say X1, X2, Xn. And, and then I take maximum and the minimum of these realizations and then I'm going to denote this is x max, this is x min. And then having these two numbers as the sufficient statistic. And show that if this t is a sufficient statistic or not, that's the objective. Okay. So having said that, that's the problem that we have. And then 
you can easily prove that this direction is a Markov chain. But uh, in, in order for t, t to be sufficient statistic, we have to show, we need to show this as well. So that is our objective. Show data to t to x Markov chain. We have to show this for each and every x, t, and c. Uh, but uh, when you consider this, what can you say? Is it easy to do or difficult to do? It is difficult. Why? Because the order is switched. We, uh, we are comfortable uh, with the, uh, the order going this way, right? If these two are given, then we can talk about uh, the event on T, right? That will be easier for us. So uh, in order to uh, evaluate this, we would like to switch the order between t and x. And uh, we know how to do that. We learned it uh, in, a, in my probability prime, uh, primer note that I gave you. So we can consider to change the order between t and x. How to do that? You can use the Bayes rule. Okay, Bayes rule. Bayes rule is the answer. Okay, Bayes rule. We have done that already for a toy problem. Okay, so using that Bayes rule, but the Bayes rule is nothing but combi combination of conditional probability and total probability theorem, which is more basic then Bayes rule. Okay. Oh, let me move this note up. All right. Let's, let us now consider this event. That event, uh, this event uh, uh, can be written as this one using the conditional uh, using the definition of conditional probability, okay? So conditional probability is joint to, uh, probability divided by the marginal. So that is this, and once we have that, then we can have uh, the conditional distribution, uh, conditional probability uh, on X now, so on X, rather than t, so we can have that one, and uh, we have this uh, denominator, all right? And then I have written this denominator to be this, and I uh, came up with these answers, but there were students' question, um, uh, you know, the student uh, asked this question in Korean, but uh, this question was uh, why there is an integration in the denominator. Uh, and uh, he's, he thinks that if C is, uh, I mean, if Xi is uh, in this interval, shouldn't it be one over N? Uh, that was the question. So when I saw this question, um, I thought I need to uh, explain this uh, one more time uh, because I, I, I believe this one is a one of the difficult questions, one of the difficult problems the students uh, have, okay? Uh, so I do not understand what he mean by uh, it right here. 
So anyway, the, since the question is about the denominator part, I will consider the denominator part in this note. And uh, basically the whole thing is the applying the base rules, right, to this problem that I have covered in my pro probability primal note. And uh, you may recall the part that I explained the need for changing the order of conditionings to solve a difficult problem. So this is one of such problems, okay? So here is my explanation. So uh, look at the first inequality in 1.3, which is the, uh, the part that I want to concentrate is the denominator part. That is this one, okay? Uh, probability of sufficient statistic given to be a certain number given data equals to C, okay? So here, uh, X max, X min are just the numbers. Data is also a number, okay? What is missing here is X, the random variable X, okay? Uh, so, uh, but in order to evaluate this, I need to uh, have X included in the expression. So how do you do that? You invoke the total probability theorem, and then this probability is nothing but uh, summation of uh, all these probabilities. So summation here means I am uh, treating this random variable X, actually is a random vector, right? Uh, to be a discrete random variable. But I, I, am, I, 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 I told you when I talk about my uh, probability primer, it's uh, 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 simpler to uh, use uh, discrete random variables, right? Uh, to replace the continuous random variable. Once you figure out what to do, you can restore the uh, continuous random variable, right? So that is what I'm trying to do right here. So I have written summation on purpose, but I will restore the continuous random variable whenever, uh, when I have uh, finished uh, arranging what to do, okay? So the summation here is not rigorous since the random variable xi, each one of them is uh, continuous, okay? In order to write this correctly, we have to write the uh, right-hand side to, the, to be the following one. In order to write this one, the correct way is to use uh, uh, N integration. Uh, each one of them is for X1, X2, all the way up to Xn. And since X1 is continuous random variable, I need to talk about this random variable belongs to a very short interval. Uh, uh, whose length is dx1, okay? So a uh, particular value of x1 and then x1 plus uh, uh, dx1, okay? And then xn, xn plus dx1. So the length of each interval is uh, dx1, dx2, dxn, and so on. So that's the integration, okay? Note that how long uh, this expression is unnecessarily. But if I treat this as a discrete random variable, I can write very uh, uh, short like this one, okay? So I can focus on the critical part, okay? And then whenever I uh, uh, want to uh, restore it, I can always restore it 
by remembering uh, what is actually going on with this expression is this one, okay? So this is tedious. I cannot even hold them into a single line of expression. And uh, uh, if I do that, because there are too many variables unnecessarily so that I cannot uh, concentrate on the uh, more important part, okay? So I will use, I use this uh, shorthand notation, right? Option in the course, okay? That is why I use the shorthand notation and uh, just remember that they are continuous random variables. And then once we are finished with it, then uh, we can restart.